Hey ladies and gentlemen, I'm sort of in the middle of something and I thought I'll take you along. I was a bit witchy. Come with me. <laughs> okay, weird intro. I have been working all day and I was quite successful with it. Which kind of makes me think I should film the process because I have this thing where sometimes I start filming the development of a new pattern from the very beginning and then I sort of kind of lose the plot a little bit and then I have all of this footage that I'm never ever really gonna show you because it's not really valuable for you. And today was the opposite. I thought I'm gonna take the day for myself and start making one first mock-up slash prototype of a new pattern that I want to develop and I didn't film the process because I thought I'm just gonna start out do a bit of like leg work before I come and 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 like take you along and maybe that was a mistake because it <laughs> turned out that that first mock-up was a home run and I can now actually move on to the prototype so that means you're now on the train to almost project completion in terms of this first prototype. Now, you might wonder, Elisa, what are we making actually? Could you please fill me in? I have just come out of this marathon, what I like to call a marathon, of Amelia dresses. That was my last pattern that I had released, which was success. Thank you to everybody who purchased it. I made four versions of that sewing pattern just because it was a pattern pack that was so extensive that you could make 22 plus dresses out of it. You've heard this a couple of times now. You, you know what I'm talking about. So I had to make a bunch of Amelia's and now I'm done with those. I had two weeks off. Now I'm back and I kind of started thinking about what pattern I want to work on next. And the pickle that I find myself in right now is that I have so many pattern ideas that I want to make that I don't actually know where to start. I know. I know I can hear you. Like I literally feel like I can hear you through my phone right now where you're gonna say, Lisa, please make the wrap dress. We are waiting for the wrap dress. And I know, I know this and I wanna make the wrap dress uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm literally gonna start with it. Like literally this week, I promise. But for some reason today I was like, I wanna make this other dress first. The other dress being this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a sketch in here. So I, started working on this drop waist dress today which has been inspired by multiple things that i've seen recently one of them being this dress by reformation my actual o series dresses so ophelia and odette and oakley the oakley blouse so they're gonna get a fourth sister which is gonna be this beautiful drop waist boat neck corseted dress this is just a silhouette that is up and coming right now i can feel it i can see it everywhere and it's something that i really want to own myself which for me is my compass if i feel like i want to have something then usually that's what works really well i know that you guys love boat necks i know that the ophelia double s shaped bust elevation <laughs> that i do in my o series dresses is quite popular the drop waist is a little bit of a gamble i know that not a lot of people would probably gravitate towards this but it's something that is really trending right now and it's just gonna get more this year. I myself, I don't own anything with a drop waist, but I've just been pinning drop waist dresses for like literally the last six months and I think it's time. I am determined to show you how good this is gonna look. I am determined to prove to you that this is a winner. <laughs> you will see. So today I made a first mock-up and it looks like this. It was honestly a success right out of the box. I didn't have to change much about this first draft. So since I'm so happy with this first mock-up, I decided to just straight up go ahead and make a prototype. And I wanted to use fabric that I have in my stash. And I have this beautiful dark blue linen. It's like a tumbled linen. It's like, what is this? Is it actually linen? A canvas type linen material. Definitely not 100% linen because it doesn't crinkle as badly. I think maybe it's a viscose linen. I'm not entirely sure, but this is what we're going to use. I'm now going to cut all of my pieces and then we can start putting the dress together and hopefully, fingers crossed, everything will turn out well. Let me show you how I cut my facing because that is something that some of you have wondered recently. So I figured I'll give you a bit of a more in-depth tutorial on what's going on. So I decided to go and face my neckline of the dress 
front and back as well as my armholes because we do not have sleeves for this dress. And what I'm also going to do is I will extend the facing down the center back where my zipper is gonna go in so I can hide away the zipper on the inside nicely. So that means these are the pieces that I need. When we cut facing, the way we have to think about it is simply that we're recutting the same pieces that we already have, but just around the areas that we need. So I have my center front on a fold here and I have my center back just randomly on a double layer of fabric here. I'm gonna grab some tails chalk and I'm just going to outline the piece that I have already cut onto my fabric and I'm just gonna make use of the seam allowance that I've already given myself. So I'm just outlining the neckline, the shoulder, and the armhole like this. And then I go down the side like this. And I do the same thing around the back. So like I said, I'm just outlining the areas that I want facing for. So these are my exposed seams. And then I go down my center back, outline that for a little while. I'm then actually still going to grab my lower back piece. I'm gonna align it exactly with the upper one so my seam allowance is overlapping pulling this up so you can see what i'm doing because my center back here isn't actually straight i have a bit of a shape to it i'm just going to outline that shape as well and then i'm going to extend it as far as i can and that's that so now i remove these pieces and what you can see is the outline of them and now what we do is we simply give this an even distance around the perimeter i'm just hand drawing that on right here you could go for five centimeters four centimeters six centimeters however much you feel like works for you the only important thing is that where the front meets the back those are the same distance so i have eight centimeters here along the back and here I'm just gonna go over. So this whole section is gonna be faced and then I go down again like this and that is my facing. So this is all I need to overturn my armholes, my neckline, and then give myself a nice finish for the center back. And because I have already traced all of this with the seam allowance, I don't need to add any extra seam allowance. I'm just gonna cut exactly where I traced. So what facing is really is just parts of the perimeter of your pattern specifically the ones that are going to help you to overturn your exposed areas. This is what my facing looks like for me. And since I'm on it, I actually also want to cut some pockets because I never do pockets and I don't know why. Pockets are the best thing, honestly. And I'm going to show you how to wing a pocket. You do this. This is your side seam. Then I'm thinking about the seam that is holding the godet, that is a bit on an angle, so I'll say like that. And then I do this, boom, 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 and we have sort of pocket. Easy, easy breezy. Let us commence to sewing together the dress, starting with the bodice. All right, I'm gonna start with the front of the dress, just because that's a little bit more exciting than the back. For that, I'm gonna need my top front bodice and then the waist section. I'm gonna leave the go day to the side just for now. And this is part of my O series of dresses. And you can see maybe here on the scribble, I'm thinking about calling it Olympia, the Olympia dress. And that is because I feel this dress looks like a tennis dress. And then Sendeha is doing her challenges press tour right now. And I have been influenced, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so this dress, if made in a sports, fabric, some sort of like active wear fabric, is a tennis dress, honestly. We open our waist section and we open our bodice section and these beautiful shapes reveal themselves. I'm actually quite proud of this because this looks really nice. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna place the right sides touching for starters. If you do have right sides, I don't. So I'm gonna start by placing my center front notches on top of each other. Don't forget to place your notches, they just help you align everything nicely. And then we have notches for where the bust gathering starts. So I'm just placing my next pin exactly at that notch point. The next pin I place is aligning my side seams with each other. So I go all the way over to the side seam and I place a pin there and I do this on both sides. And then I start pinning my double S shaped under bust seam flat on top of each other until I reach my second notch point, which indicates to me how much ease I have to gather. So 
The two notches when you have pinned this side flat will almost meet each other, but this is the ease that you have to spread out now. How far you spread it out is up to you. You could kind of like make it disappear, but that's not how the design is intended. The design is intended that the bulk of the ease is gathered up just beyond the first notch point and you wanna gather it out towards the side seam. So I'm doing this by hand and I'm just placing a bunch of small pleats and I count the pleats so I can replicate the exact placement on the other side. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven pleats. Now do the same thing on the other side. What you do wanna make sure is that you now have a look and see if the placement is symmetrical and ideally it is. So you can see the pleats are placed the exact same distance on both sides. And now we can sew the underbust seam. What I'll do is I'll place it sew over the pleats so they face all towards the center front. And then I place it the other way and sew over this way so those pleats face the center front as well. If I were to just go from one side to the other, all the pleats would face this way and then they face the wrong way on the outside. They should either face all towards each other or all away from each other. This is what the front looks like so far and all of the pleats face away from my center front which looks nice and consistent and now I'm gonna go and give this a nice press facing the seam allowance downwards. All right so now that this underbust seam is sewn we can move on to the front godet. A godet is basically an area of a skirt that is inset into a pre- the find area, let's put it like this, that was probably not the Wikipedia definition of it, but... You can see that we have this predefined seam here and this godet needs to go into this section. Now you can see that this was slashed and spread across so we do have a little bit more volume. So we need to add two basting stitches to this upper side of the godet first before we can set it in. So I have now given both of my godets two rows of basting stitches that are not closed at the beginning or the end of the seam. Basting stitches means that I simply chose the biggest stitch length available on my machine and that is so we can easily gather up this section. What I need to point out as well is that you need to consider that there is one centimeter of seam allowance, a little bit more, one and a half, right here. What I have done is I've given myself a diagonal snip towards where my actual seam is going to sit. And this is so I have an easier time setting in this godet. I'm going to start with this seam right here. I'm gonna place the two sides, right sides touching, and I pin this front section in. So once I get up to this diagonal slit right here, I'm just gonna sew this down. I'm gonna start exactly here. I'm gonna start exactly here and sew down this side of my godet. We look a little something like this. And now I can go and do the other side of the godet. Again, facing right sides. And I will start by pinning down the side seam, what needs to align with my side. And now I can see the ease that I can gather down to this distance. I just grab the two top or bottom threads of my basting stitches on one side of the godet and I start pulling and pushing and distributing the ease across this distance so I can get some nice ruffles. And again, I want this to be evenly distributed. Once I feel like that is the case, I am going to pin it down. And now I take this to my sewing machine and sew this side down. So once it's pinned, I can go and sew it down and I'll make sure that I meet the beginning of my seam that I placed over here so I have a really nice clean finish in that corner. done I can have a look from the outside and see how happy I am with this corner and it is pretty neat especially once it receives a good press I think this works just fine and the godet is in and now do the same thing on the other side all right let us commence and put together the back 
we have these back pieces. So top bodice, lower bodice, and we have the godet. And you can see that with this version of this dress, I have a bit of a curve in the center back, which I have actually never done before, but I don't see why you shouldn't be able to do that. And I think that this will follow my back curvature actually better. So this is uh, why this looks like this. First, I'm gonna pin the top and bottom bodice together, right sides touching. Now that the top and bottom bodice are sewn, I'm gonna move on to the godets. What I wanna do is I'll add two rows of basting stitches to my waist seam, just as I've done with the front godets, setting my machine to the biggest stitch length available. All right, so now that we have the basting stitches in, we can grab our bodice and now we need to gather down this distance to this distance. So I'm placing the bodice right sides touching onto the godet. I'm not actually sure in the back you would call this a godet, it's just a skirt in the back. So I'm pinning it here and then I'm also pinning that side down. And now I grab my basting stitches, top and bottom, either the top threads or the bottom threads. And what I'm gonna do is I will tie up the basting stitches on one side just so I don't lose my gather. Now that I feel like the distance is right, I'm just redistributing the gather and then I pin it. All right, and now I sew the skirt to the bodice. Okay, so I have now assembled both my back sides and as we know, we have assembled the front sides. And before we can join front and back, we need to go and search all of our inside seams. So that would be the waist seams and the underbust seams for both front and back. All right, exciting times. I have searched all my seams on the inside and now I can pin together front and back. I place my front side, right side facing up on the table in front of me. And then I find my back sides and I place the according sides, right sides touching onto the front. I'm gonna start with one side first. We can start with the shoulder. So I move up to the shoulder here, pretty straight forward. Just pin the shoulder, right sides touching. And then I move on to the sides. And the important thing is to align the underbust seams front and back as well as the waist godet seams front and back. You want them to match up for a nice look. And I shall not forget my pockets that I prepared, which I almost would have forgotten my pockets just now. I have these little suckers here. We need to place the pockets right sides touching. So I take two layers for one side and I place them towards the inside of my skirt, like so. So I sandwich the pocket between the two layers of the skirt. I then go ahead and pin both of them individually to the skirt layers. So one pocket side is pinned in and I moved a centimeter down from my waist seam approximately. Now I do the same thing here. I now go and sew these pockets individually to the front and back skirt sides. So I'm just gonna go and serge down both the front and back side seam of the skirt individually. That's gonna make it easier for me to get a nice clean finish with the pocket later. Now that that is done, and the pocket sides are surged to my skirt front and back individually. I'm gonna go and understitch the seam allowance. So I'm folding my pocket over like this. Good idea maybe to give it a press. And then I'm gonna top stitch that. So this is super secure for when we just put our hands in and out of the pocket. We have the pockets attached and understitched. And now when we pin the skirt together front and back. Again, we wanna make sure that the waist seam is aligned. That is an important point. And then we are going to pin our pockets on top of each other. And when we sew, we are gonna sew around the perimeter of the pocket like a little ear that is attached to our skirt. So what I do next is I sew from my underarm area here, from my armpit area, down my side all the way where the pocket starts. I then, instead of going straight down, sew around this little pocket ear and then down the side again so this section stays open for us to put our hands in. You can choose to either 
make the pocket entrance a little bit smaller up to your liking i'm gonna start right up here and then down here i'm just gonna close it probably those first four centimeters this is going to be big enough for my hand to still go in but also it's going to help avoid anything that's inside the pocket to fall out so now i'm going to sew this side and then i'll repeat all of the same steps on the other side of the dress and then we can try it on Okay, when I say I'm obsessed with this dress, this is an understatement. <laughs> this is so pretty. I love the silhouette. I love that I added pockets. Why? I, I love pockets. I used to put pockets in almost everything. I only just now realized that most of my sewing patterns don't have pockets, which is a crime. I'm sorry. I apologize to you. From now on, if I can, I will add pockets. And this dress just screams for pockets. This is how you're supposed to pose in this dress <laughs> okay so now about the fit it's perfect i don't think i have to do anything about it once i add the facing up here this is going to be cleaned up and nice this is really well fitted it's not too tight it's not too loose the back looks a little puckery right now because there's no zipper in it i've just pinned it shut i might take the back in a little bit here i feel like this is potentially a little bit voluminous so if i take that in by just a little bit that will be good probably but other than that i'm really happy i accidentally gave the skirt a bit of a what is what would you call this it's also like a double s shape it somehow interestingly mimics the underbust seam so it's short in the front and then it flares out a little bit and gets a little longer and i actually quite like that it's pretty so yeah this 1920s art deco tennis match dress is getting along nicely so i'm now gonna have lunch and then i will add the facing and the zipper and then we can finish this baby up all right now the inside of the dress looks all pretty and neat all the seams are searched i just searched the side seams including the perimeter of my pockets and now i'm going to fetch the facing that we have prepared and the first step will be to join the facing front and back. So we have our front here and we have our back sides. And what we do, the same way we've done the shell, we place the facing front and back right sides touching and we sew the shoulders as well as the side seams. I've just pressed the facing and it now looks like this. So we have the center back here going down and this is our armholes and our neckline and this we now have to attach to our dress so what i'll do is i'll grab my dress place it on my desk in front of me right sides facing up and now i grab my facing and i place it right sides facing down so the right sides of the two elements are matching up what i do next is i pin together the center front i have a crease here ideally you would have a notch point and then we move on to the shoulders i want my shoulder seams i want the seam allowance of my shoulder seams to be open this will help me get the most flat and tidy result and then i continue around the back neckline so we start by pinning the back neckline first because of the way we cut the facing it matches up perfectly i leave the back open for now this is where we're gonna put the zipper later all right so my neckline is now pinned together and this is the first thing i'm going to sew So now that the facing is perfectly placed along the neckline, we need to move on to the armholes. Now the armholes are a little tricky because we cannot really do the burrito method because we just don't have enough space. So what I prefer to do, simply because it's easier, is open the shoulder seams back up again. So I just close them up first of all for trying the dress and then I close the facing so I could easily place my neckline. But now I'm opening my shoulder seams again. So once the shoulder seam is open, I can easily go and turn the armhole so that I can close this curve. So I'm placing the side seam on top of each other and then I just follow this curvature. I now sew around my armhole. 
Now I can just go in here and turn the straps basically outside out. And I'm now gonna go and give this a really good press. Now that our neckline and armhole look like this, beautifully overturned, we need to join the shoulders. And really what you do is you go into your back, you grab your front and you pull it into the backside. And what will happen is that your front will place itself quite naturally into your back. You want the ends of the shoulders to stay flush like this, place a pin or two, and you sew your shoulder shut, honoring the seam allowance that you gave yourself. And then you just pull and you will find a beautifully overturned shoulder. Give it a good press and your shoulders will look like this. All right. I'm now going to insert the invisible zipper the way I usually do. Then I'll do my hem and then we're done. I'm now going to paste that first side in. I'm going to mark exactly where certain seams sit on the zipper. So we have our underbust seam, which needs to be lining up. And we also have our drop waist seam which needs to be lining up so I'm just marking the placement on my actual zipper so now when I pin the other side I can make sure that these spots align so I'm now gonna paste in the second side all right I just tried on the dress and it fits really well you can now go ahead and use your invisible zipper foot on your machine to finish this off before we then go and overturn everything with our face. All right, super happy with the placement of the zipper. It's also invisible as it should be. And now what we can do is use our facing to overturn the raw edges for a super nice and clean finish on the inside. So for that, you simply fold it right sides touching with your shell and then you pin it down. And you don't have to sew it super close to the zipper. You wanna make sure that you are at least on your zipper band when you sew it down. And then when we turn everything right sides out again, we're gonna have a super nice and clean finish. Now that that is done, I can overturn the zipper, maybe take away a little bit of bulk here from the corner. And now I can overturn the facing and I should have a nice and clean finish right here. I am eventually going to surge all around my facing for a clean finish on the inside. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we are done. I'm gonna give the skirt a very simple hem. I'm just gonna surge it on my serger, fold it over once and top stitch it from the outside. And then we are ready for the final reveal. think I personally love this dress I love this silhouette and I think this might be the beginning of a completely new era for me I was a devoted high waist girly all my designs have high waists I never have done any drop waists before uh, even just not having a waist seam was kind of a big deal for me in the past and now I feel like I just opened a whole new box of 
possibilities for myself, which is really exciting. I do feel like I will play around with this drop waist theme quite a lot in my upcoming projects. Don't you worry, this dress is going to be a pattern on my Etsy shop really soon. I am going to do a test to run with the pattern as it is right now. I will call out volunteers on Instagram, so if you would like to be considered for the next test run for this dress, please keep your eyes peeled on my Instagram to make sure you don't miss it. And that is that for today. Do let me know what you think about the dress in the comments as always. I can't wait to read your thoughts. And next time, we're gonna start work on the wrap dress. Pinky promise. <laughs> See you then. Thanks for letting me be a part of your day as always and have a lovely week. Bye-bye.